It is 7 a.m. for me on Pacific Standard Time. I am normally Eastern Standard Time. So normally this is 10 a.m. Uh, so it is 7 a.m. I have been getting up every single morning so early, uh, but I am loving it because I'm in Malibu, which is my favorite place in the whole entire world. Uh, and this is uh, a beautiful, beautiful manifestation of mine. And I'm going to share more about that with you guys over these next couple of days. So uh, this is totally uh, outside of the box for us to do a challenge in this way. We haven't done a manifestation challenge in probably over a year or more. And um, the the reason that I wanted to do this was because it's so important when you can have organized set of steps to guide you towards doing something, you can reuse this going forward as many times as you ever want. So pay attention to what we're doing and the ways in which we're doing it. Uh, and you'll see that it all makes complete sense. And then I'm going to teach, of course, uh, why we do it in this way uh, as we go through. I sleep with ocean waves every single night on my phone. And I have a little um, I have a little coaster next to my bed that I put my water on every night that says Malibu Dreaming. So I literally have been going to bed every night with the Malibu ocean waves in my ear and the little coaster next to my bed. And now I'm actually here. And now I'm going to bed every night with the window open with the ocean waves. So I don't have to put my app on. Uh, it's real ocean waves this time. And it's just a, a testament to manifestation and the power of it. But it is no coincidence that I am an all-in type of gal. Like, I don't, I don't half-ass it. I don't dip my toes in the water. Like, I'm jumping in. And I, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to, like, I go after my dreams fully. Like, if I want something, like, I'm going to, I'm going to do whatever I can to have that thing. And what I used to think I had to do to get what I wanted is very different from what I now know I can do to get what I wanted. So for me, it's about really, really making a decision and following through, following through. So the people that achieve the most in this world are the people who, what? Are willing to do what most people aren't. They're willing to be committed no matter what, to be persistent no matter what. So persistence says that you will continue on regardless of what your outside world tells you. So no matter what happens, you're gonna follow through, you're gonna do it. Um, so persistence is really, really important. Going all in is really, really important and following through. And so if you are here to be transformed, that then means that you will then transform your outside world. That's what manifestation is. You know the difference between interested and committed? Somebody that's interested will do what's convenient. So, oh, if it fits into my schedule, maybe I'll do it. If I find the time, maybe I'll do it. But someone that is committed will do it no matter what, does whatever it takes. So, you know, you're ready to go to bed at night. You haven't done your homework yet. You say, well, I'm going to stay up an extra 15 minutes and do it. So uh, that's just a little difference that I really, really love the language around. Okay, a little bit about me. So I'm a registered nurse by background. Okay, so I nursed patients at the bedside in long-term care, in labor and delivery, and I became a charge nurse, and then I became a nurse leader, and then I became a director in healthcare. And I added on and I piled on things. Okay. I added on and I piled on things. I got another bachelor's degree. I got a master's degree. I got another certification. I went and I took this course and then I took that course. It was professional development overload over and over and over again, thinking the more I knew, the more letters next to my name, the higher the position, the, the, the better the title, the better that I would be. Hey, what was I seeking? What was I seeking? External validation. And I didn't know who I was. I didn't love who I was. And I did not believe that I mattered and having all of these things would make me matter. So in September of 2019, after I had quit my nursing career, I was stressed out. I was overworked. I got sick and I decided not to return to my um, short term disability. They were, they were pressuring me to come back. I was not ready, so I quit. And that was the best decision that I've ever made in my life because it led me to where I am now. 
it led me to opening me up to doing what I'm really meant to be doing. And so September of 2019, I got introduced to Bob Proctor from the movie The Secret, my dear, dear friend and mentor. And when I started studying with him and his material, I started to study me. So no more was I studying bachelor's degrees and master's degrees and certifications. No longer was I studying nursing skills and healthcare administration and policy and procedure and all of that. I took all of that focused attention. I took all of that energy and I turned it all onto myself. And I started studying me. Who am I? What do I love? What do I want to be? What am I passionate about? You know, what makes me do what I do? And the really, really beautiful thing about that is that my world started to change so quickly when I started to study myself instead. And the self-love was one of the first things that really started to show up for me. And I started to get rid of a lot of these things. And I realized that I wasn't my title. I wasn't what I did for a living. I wasn't my hair. I wasn't my body. I wasn't my appearance. I wasn't how much money I was making or how much success I was having. I started to understand that I'm a spiritual being having a human experience for a short time while in this body. And it amplified so much more about me. And then I started to understand how it all works. I started to understand how I will work and how I can become consciously aware of the unconscious patterns and programs that are happening so that I can turn it around and step into what I called greatness or my extraordinary life. And the more I started to study me, the more I allowed myself to want greater things in my life. I started to want more time freedom. I started wanting more financial freedom. I wanted to have more independence. I wanted to travel the world more. I no longer wanted to commute an hour to a job that I worked for 10 hours a day, commute home, make the family dinner, do the dishes, watch a TV show, and go to bed. I wanted an extraordinary life. Extraordinary, which means out of the ordinary. We all create these ordinary lives because we're taught to do that. We are just taught to just follow these motions. And then have you ever sat there like at the end of a day and it's literally Groundhog Day and you've done the same thing? every single day for the past 10 years and you sit there and you go, is this really what this is all for? Is this really what life is about? Just the same thing over and over and over again. And so I fell in love with the idea that there's an extraordinary life that exists for me. And once I tapped into that and I built that desire, it all started to show up for me. TV shows and People wanting me to write a chapter in a book that went bestseller. And then I started to grow my side. I had a side business. I had a network marketing business first. That started to take off like crazy. The more that I existed in this material, the, way, the more I thought like this and I felt like this and I behaved like this. And I'll show you what I mean by like this. This version of me, the more things all started to come to me. So January of 2020, right before COVID, I launched my coaching business. I decided to teach this material. I decided this is my purpose. This is my passion. Let's go. Let's do this thing. I told Chris, my husband at the time, uh, we are going to, I'm going to make $300,000 in the next four months. I'm going to do that. And he's like, okay, go gay lady. Uh, and so we went $50,000 in debt to start my business uh, for me to become a coach. Uh, and I made... A million dollars in seven months. So from January to July, I brought in a million dollars. By the end of that year, 3.3 million. The next year, 12 million. So it's just going and going. And, and the amount of things that I've brought into my life is phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. I, I live the extraordinary life that I wrote down on paper in 2019. I now live it. Actually, I would say that I live beyond what I originally wrote down. So I wanted to create an international business all over the world. So Diamond Academy, we have members of our Diamond Academy family. So anybody that is 
a part of a course or a program or comes on any of our retreats or our live events, we consider you part of our family. So we, we call it our Diamond Academy family. So our Diamond Academy family is in 44 countries. Okay. So these are students in a Diamond Academy course or a program, not free events. This is people that are, that are actually like students within our family. So we're in 44 countries around the world. We have had for our live events like this, we have had 72,000 people, individual people attend our live events. And we have had over 200,000 people come onto these events total, over 200,000. And in our community right now, we have over 1,100 people that are still right now part of our Diamond Academy family. And we have had over 2,100 people take Millionaire or Modern Mentor programs. And I've only been doing this since January of 2020. So, I mean, that's, it's 2023. I mean, this is phenomenal, the impact that we've made. But what I also want to say is, Yes, I created an extraordinary life for myself, and that's where I had to start, right? I had to start somewhere. I had to start and say, okay, this is what I want for me, and I'm willing to go after it. I'm willing to grow and expand, and I'm willing to figure this out so I can teach this to other people. And so now we have people every single day in our energy living their extraordinary life. We are just talking uh, with my team. And, and my vision for my team has been a beautiful one. I want my team to be living in freedom. I want them to be fulfilled and I want them to be joyful. The language that you will hear me say is they are becoming the best of themselves. So my book that's coming out is called The Best of Yourself, How to Manifest Your Best Damn Life Through You. And what's so beautiful about this language, best of yourself, is that it's the best of you, not better than anyone. It's understanding that it's a remembering of who you have always been. And finally, you're going to become aware of it. You're going to perceive it. You're going to see it. So your greatness, your passion, your confidence, your love, your commitment, your inspiration, your power is all already here. It's already within you. You're already it. You just are not aware of it. You just don't perceive it. You just haven't said, you know what? I am. And that pivotal moment when you're like, you know what? Who have I been kidding? Who have I been kidding? I have been this my entire life. And once you step into that, your whole entire existence will change. So that's the best of yourself. We are going to talk about three things. And I wanted to really give you clear, crisp understanding of the path that I'm taking you along. So we are going to talk about the end. The end. Okay? So some people call it a vision. So we're going to create a vision board. Um, some people say, you know, it's your goals, but we're going to call it the end. Okay. So the end is as far as your mind can see. It's your end of the realm of infinite possibility. So anything and any, everything is entirely possible for you. You can have whatever the heck you want as far as your mind will take you. So Neville Goddard is one of my favorite uh, teachers about the end result. That's his language. He says the end result. So what's so beautiful about his language is when he is talking about the end result, he, he's not actually talking about a real end. He's talking about an end that you see for it. So you can go as far as you want and that will be your end. But the key is, is that I want you to see something something greater than what you see right now. It's in that observation of something new, which expands you and reduces and removes your limits. So today we're going to talk about the end result. I'm going to talk about what that is. I'm going to teach you about imagination and living in the fourth dimension, why that is so important. So you've decided what your end result is. You know exactly what it is that you want. I want this. I want that. I want to experience this. I want to go there. I want to be this. Blah, blah, blah. Once you've created that and you have it and you're ready to go, we do not stop there. They're like, okay, hey, this is what I want. No, you have to answer a very important question. Who do I need to be to have all of that? Because who you are right now has created what you have right now. What you observe today was created by the identity that you see yourself as right now. So who you think you are in this moment created the life you experience right now. So in order to create this new end result, this new place, you must become a new version of you. 
So then who do I need to be? And who do you need to be the best of yourself? What does it mean to be a new version of you to match the vision? We're going to be the new version of ourselves. So who do I need to be to have that? And then I'm going to be it. This is big. So you can see how there's a whole bunch of steps missing in the traditional way in which people manifest. You didn't do any of the work. You haven't actually done any of the growth. So now what are we going to do? We are going to answer the question, who do I need to be? And then we are going to be it. So we're going to do this over three days. It's a lot, but we're going to get it done. I'm going to show you how to do it. The whole entire reason for doing a manifestation challenge is because you want more for your life. There is something within you that's saying, I meant for more, or I would love more, or I don't have it yet, but I really would like it. There is a desire in there. And so we cannot manifest something unless we know what we want. And many of us don't know. We have no idea what we would love. Many of us don't even ask ourselves that question. We think about what would be good for our children, what would be good for our spouses, what would be good for our careers, what would be good for our homes that we live in, what would be good for my mom and dad, what would help them. The question wasn't what would my kids love, what would my husband love, what would my parents love. The question was, what would I love? What would I love? But answering the question of what would I love, it takes you immediately into the realm of infinite possibility. It puts you onto the creative plane. Okay. What do I mean by that? To to go to the creative plane. So most people, probably 98% of people are serving the world that they live in. They're seeing their life. They're having an emotional reaction to their life. And then they're vibrating to match their life that they observe, that they see, and then they attract from there. You're you're doing is you're seeing, you're feeling, and then you're attracting. So you're just creating everything that you see right now. So what we want to do instead is we want to think from what we would love. We want to feel from what we would love and we want to vibrate as a match to what we would love. So it's not to say today, right now, I'm a single woman. I'm doing it too. I'm a single woman now. I'm, I'm here for it. And you know what, guys? I'm practicing. I'm practicing manifestation for all of you. So I'll let you know my learnings. Um, but the funny thing about that, though, is that if you're a single person and you want love in your life, you want love, passionate, real love, you can't be sitting over here in the vibration of, I don't have love. I need love. Where is it? You're not attracting passionate, strong, powerful love. You're attracting people that don't love themselves, that don't care a lot, that probably just want something casual. So in order for you to attract real love into your life, you must be real love now. So you must feel the wholeness of who you are. You must realize that you don't need love in your life. You are love. And once you realize that, the love will find you because you will pull it and you will draw it to you. I have read this book called Single on Purpose. I think it's brilliant. It's not that you're choosing to be single forever on purpose. It's that you're understanding that who you are in this moment right now does not need anybody else. I've been walking this beach every night. I walked it two hours the other night and I walked it an hour last night. Would I love to walk this beach with the love of my life and watch the sunset? Yeah, why not? But have I loved every single moment of walking it by myself? My gosh, I've loved it. So when that person comes into my life to walk that beach with me, I will be happy to invite them into my world. But I don't need that to be complete. It's, it's different. So this is what I mean by we don't want to live from our circumstance. We want to live from the creative plane, from the realm of infinite possibility. So part of this challenge then is to follow through on some things and step into some things and to do some things that make you a little bit uncomfortable, right? So every single one of us is in a vibration. We are vibrating right now according to a feeling, a way in which we feel about ourselves, about the, about the world and about life. We're going to raise your vibration. You might already feel it. Yes. Okay. I, I feel my frequency rising as we speak. So you're going to feel your vibration start to raise up. When your vibration starts to raise up, you will take more inspired action. You will believe in yourself more. Your fears, your doubts, your worries will start to dissipate. They'll start to go away. Um, You will likely start to attract different things to your life. So you might find business opportunities come to you or you might find new people want to meet you. Somebody asks you to go for coffee. You might also find that your intuition starts to spark. You get these ideas. Do this. Go there. Do this, et cetera, et cetera. Hold on to that. That is a state of flow. 
that is a peak manifestation state that you want to hold on to. So what will happen is if you leave our energy completely, you will dissipate and you will go back down. We want to change it permanently. We want you to go up there and we want to keep you up there. So just make the commitment that you are going to keep yourself at that level of vibration. And that will become your new normal, your new normal, not just a three day thing and go back down, but stay with it. So persistence, discipline and commitment are going to help you to do that. And we are not going anywhere. Okay, We are committed to this mission. We are here to help every single person get what they want in life because we know that when people achieve what they want in life, when they move into a state of fulfillment, love, peace, joy, happiness, spirit, oneness, when they feel their faith, we change the world. Because when you love yourself, you don't hate others. When you are happy, you treat people with kindness. You spread love. So every single one of you that steps into the best of yourselves, you then impact every single person around you. Your ripple. It is so incredibly powerful. So some of these really awful things that happened in this world, they are a result of the collective consciousness. They are a result of our thinking, our collective thinking. And so when we come together and we collectively think peace, we influence peace in this world. When we collectively come together and we talk about love and we be love and we spread more love, we influence the collective consciousness. And so you matter, your vibration matters, what you think about this world matters, the way you show up in this world matters, you make a difference. And if you don't think you do, I want you to rethink that. The way you walk around this world makes a difference and it impacts people. And so it all starts with you and your energy and your vibration and how you can change it. And when you change in this world, it's the dreamers, that change the world. That is a James Allen quote from As a Man Thinketh, and it is incredibly powerful. So you matter. I'm gonna leave it at that. Let's talk about imagination. Okay, so universal laws are very important. So universal laws mean that anywhere that you are in this universe, it is truth. It is absolutely truth. So the law of gravity says that anywhere on this planet Earth, gravity is going to hold you down unless you go to one of those places that are no gravity. But traditionally, anywhere on Earth, gravity is going to hold you to the ground. We know that. It's truth. You can't see gravity. What color is it? What does it look like? You don't know. You've never seen it. But you believe it because you experience the effects of it. You experience yourself being pulled down to the ground. So it is also universal law that every single thing that we observe in our world right now started in someone's mind, in someone's imagination. The airplane, the cell phone, the computer, the internet, this chair that I'm sitting on, this microphone that is in front of me, everything started in someone's mind first. We know this to be true, right? You're not going to argue with me on that, are you? No. So why do we not believe it then when it comes to ourselves? Why do we not believe then that everything that is in our mind will manifest? Is it just those special people? Is it just the person that created the internet, the person that created the airplane, the person that created the microphone? Is it only them that have that ability? That law only applies to them? No. So it is the perpetual transmutation of energy. Any idea held on the screen of the mind will manifest into the physical form by law. Okay. It doesn't say any idea ever. It says any idea held on the screen of the mind. Okay. So if you're living the traditional Groundhog Day life that I talked about, so if you're waking up every day, and you're going to work every single day and you are doing the motions and you're sitting in the meetings and then you come home and you make the dinner and blah, 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 blah. And you just continue to exist as that life and you never think of any other life. The idea held on the screen of your mind is that life. That's the idea. So then 
every single day you continue to live that idea. So what do we do? We replace it with a new idea. So what was my idea? Extraordinary life. What's my idea? Living part-time in Malibu. So I had to hold the idea of Malibu in my mind, listen to the ocean waves at night. I have a property in Malibu that I want, so I have the booklet. I have it out on my counter and I go through it and I look at it. Visualizing myself walking the Malibu beach every single night and watching the sunsets. Visualizing myself going to get my matcha on the Malibu pier. These are all the things, the, the little Malibu dreaming coaster sitting at my bedside table. So I've held the idea on the screen of my mind because I know that as long as I hold the idea of living in Malibu, I will live in Malibu, just like that. But we don't believe it. We stop. We stop focusing upon it. We stop believing it. We stop asking for it. And then the longer that you're away from Malibu, you start to think, oh, well, it looks like Malibu is not going to happen. I don't do that. So I said the other day uh, on a call, I think it was maybe our millionaire call. I said, I'm really good in the in-between, but I'm okay in the in-between. But I don't, I don't need to observe that. I know it's already done. I know it's on its way. I know I will be walking the Malibu beach. I know I will, I will own a home in Malibu. Done. So then in the in-between, I'm just hanging out, loving life, feeling free, feeling joyful, being aware of all the greatness that is all around me. So I'm still holding the idea, right? Any ideas held on the street of the mind will manifest in the physical form. So the perpetual transmutation of energy means what? It means that energy is always transmuting. Perpetual means always, it never stops. Transmutation of energy means energy goes from one form to another form. So transmutation of energy with water, it goes from water to steam or it goes from water to ice. That is the perpetual transmutation of energy. So what we're talking about here is we're going to do it from thoughts into physical form. We're transmuting thought energy into physical 3D energy. So the thought energy of me being in Malibu is going to now, is now turned into the physical energy of my body actually here on the beach. Just a little example. So energy is always transmuting. You choose with what way you want it to transmute. What a beautiful way. What a beautiful way to transmute this energy today. That's what I always say. You can even be really super angry and you can transmute energy. You can take that angry energy and put it to good use. Sometimes if you piss me off and you fire me up, that lights a fire under me. That's me that puts me into action. So I've transmuted a negative feeling of anger into a positive thing. Make a bigger difference in the world. Oh, you tell me I can't do something? Okay, I'm going to show you. So transmutation of energy, perpetual transmutation of energy means that it's always transmuting. So let's talk about the example of every day living the same life over and over and over again. You go to the same job for 35 years. You have the same dinners. You go to the same restaurants. You go on the same uh, trip every single year. There's still the transmutation of energy. There's still that perpetual transmutation. Thoughts are always becoming things. They're just always becoming the same things, habitually becoming the same things. Transformation, though, is the process with which you learn to transmute something new. And it's usually something you've never had, done, or been before. You're transforming yourself into something different to transform your outside world into something different.